etc., etc. It's going. It's 6 o'clock, May 12, 2014. This is uh, the Curriculum Instruction Committee meeting. Carol Bites, co chair, um, presiding. Attendees as follows uh, from the board Richard Martino and administra uh, Connor Kurtz en route. Administration Andrea Dinsmore. Jenny Rexford. Rob Hurley. Mary Beth Torsha. Okay, first item. Second item. That was the first item. Oh, wait, what's the procedures? Your yeah, participation. No. We don't do that here. Okay. So uh, we could begin with a discussion on the Go Math uh, books, please, Mrs. Torsha. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hurley. And Mr. Hurley has the uh, sales rep, David Willard, from Hooten Math, the Hooten Mifflin, who really knows about our Go Math. So I'm going to ask Dave if he would mind coming up. And we have Mrs. Endy here this evening to speak to the utilization of it in sixth grade because that's the only place that it's been implemented. Although we have materials for grades three through Six, only sixth grade implemented it because third through fifth grade was uncomfortable using it without the staff development prior. So we, we put them on hold. We weren't under the same um, pressures as Mr. Hurley and uh, sixth grade was with regards to the um, Common Core and, and the way that the testing was rolling out. So Dave, Thank I'm you. gonna have you just speak to second sure. grade and I brought yeah. your second grade kit. So right. whatever Great. you wanna do, I think- um, okay. Um, well, first, just any any questions right off the bat you're dying to ask, or just kind of want a general overview? A general overview is another. Okay. Thing. All right. So, Go Math um, is um, this is uh, this is the first edition of this program. First copyright of it came out in 2012, so it was written solely and completely based on the Common Core. So you should find very tight alignment to also the Pennsylvania Common Core grade level by grade level. Um, any lessons you might find that perhaps are part of the extra 15% states are allowed to add, um, we are writing supplemental lessons that we will post online so you will have a 100% alignment to the Pennsylvania Common Core. Um, is, this is a different or sort of unique math program in that um, it is a subscription based math program. The student edition actually comes packaged with the practice and homework book. And these come shrink wrapped together, but the student book is a soft bound, full color student book that they actually write in and keep with, take ownership of, and use as a study guide. Everything in the entire program, all the print materials are also available on the website as well. So this is subscription based, anywhere from one year to 10 years. Of course, you know, as a publicly traded company, we do our good job and we uh, set it up the pricing structure so it encourages you, you know, 10 years is cheaper per unit as opposed to one year. Um, I believe you guys have five-year licenses on this. So what we do is we ship you new ones every year. You get an email around this time that says, hey, it's time to go ahead and just log on and, and make sure everything looks okay with your order, and we ship you new books every, every year. Which was um, purchased prior to this administration. Right. Thank you. And, there is, and you also have the complete online program for that term as well. So that is sort of the print student materials. I know Mrs. Bites was interested in seeing these um, teacher. Teacher components. Yep. yep. All right. First thing, and also something a little bit different, is we did the teacher editions by chapter as well. So a lot of uh, folks just like the, it's a lot easier to handle and manipulate and so forth. And this has all of your um, teacher focused instruction around the edge, additional practice, reinforcement, enrichment as well. Here is the actual lesson. At the primary level, we introduce a lot of the lessons through like a listen and draw. So there's a discussion, there's a hands-on component. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of brain theory suggests that in order for new connections to be made and, and long-term learning to take place, um, the more uh, reinforcement they have, the more stimulus they have through multiple senses, 
the better they'll they'll relate to that information and recall later. So can, can I interject? Sure. Is, is the program going back to the way that we used to teach when I was probably starting in the classroom, maybe Mr. Hurley, back to mastery of skills rather than learn it? test it, move on whether or not you got it. It is absolutely based 100% on mastery and because that is what the Common Core right. dictated. So um, you'll find that um, lessons aren't repeated from one grade level to the next, which is what you saw with a lot of math programs mm -hmm. prior. Uh, for those students that didn't get it the first time, we'll spiral around and come do it again. Now it's really building on prior knowledge. So all of the uh, chapters come with a pre-assessment to do, and the importance of that is, are these students ready for this content? And if your data shows you're not ready for this content, then you need to do some reteaching and fill in those gaps so that they're ready to continue in that lesson and master that content. And it has perfect, I mean, it has suggestions for the kids that know what they're doing. Okay, you can work on one of, start beginning on one of the chapter projects that you can, that, uh, that's available in the program. And then you can pull small groups and do the reteaching with them. Um, and then uh, yeah, there's all kinds of great online and technology resources with the program. Um, you can project the book. There are interactive whiteboard lessons you can download, which are sort of modern day PowerPoint lessons, and they have interactivity built into them. There's a complete online intervention system called Soar to Success, which you have accessible. Um, we have animated math models. The primary grades, K through three, use Curious George, another one of our Houghton Mifflin logos. And the three through six uses Carmen San Diego. Um, animated math models. And then there's also a complete um, technology uh, program called Mega Math that's available for students to use or teachers to project and, and demonstrate math concepts or do some reteaching with. So um, it's completely written on the HTML5 uh, programming language so that it'll run on any, virtually any laptop or tablet device, including iPads. Um, so the lessons start out with a listen and draw, and then they go to a share and show, and all the students will have a big printed um, kind of like whiteboard with a dry erase marker they can write on, and then they can show answers, and the teacher can do some nice formative assessment that way. And then they'll move on to more independent work on your own, um, and this is a great opportunity for them to work maybe with a partner and small groups as well, and then we can come back and summarize and, and work on the problem solving and the higher order thinking. And then on to the next lesson, additional teacher information. There's a whole RTI package covering the various tiers of RTI intervention for your formal RTII programs, and then boom, next lesson, listen and draw, the share and show on your own, additional teaching resources here. So that's how the teacher edition is set up. Enrichment book for your challenge students that need some additional challenge. Um, there's a whole assessment guide. You have printed assessments, formative, summative, online assessment. You can do um, completely online assessments. Um, might as well stick on the assessment part. We just recently developed park and smarter balance of type, uh, type assessments because these represent the more rigorous style assessments um, that are seen in, in the Common Core and the direction that the PSSA is changing. Those are the two well. groups who are designing the next PSSA assessments, the park okay. and the, the park consortium is the one I believe Pennsylvania is tied into, if my recollection is correct. They are par participating yeah. members, but not a governing okay. member yeah. of, of mm -hmm. those consortia. Yeah. So, um, additional teacher additions. And there's also a planning guide. It says a lot more sort of uh, big picture opportunities, tie-ins to the math, what you did before, what you're going to do next, and how it ties in. Because part of the Common Core and part of the mastery at, at every level is we're not going to you know, repeat lessons, so we have to tie the concepts together because you should be teaching fewer lessons throughout the course of the entire school year, but making broader and deeper connections with the content. So a lot of useful resources this evening. You know, when you pull this, the teacher guide up online, everything's clickable. You click on it and it pulls up that resource. So teachers don't even have to lug materials back and forth and so forth. Students, if they have uh, connections at home, they can pull up and complete homework assignments and so forth right online. I'm going to ask Mrs. Endy, who's using it in sixth grade, to speak to you know, components that you're using, what your, the, the value of the program. 
We found it very useful. I mean, it's very, very, it is very closely aligned to the Common Core. I mean, if you look at the, um, the Common Core requirements and safe driven, it very well matches up. We do use a lot of the online pieces. Um, I project the textbook for the students to fill in as they go, since it is interactive and they have their own piece. I'll project it right on my whiteboard for them to fill in. I will project the homework pieces, the, the answers, because there's a teacher's edition and a student's edition. So when we go over homework, I'll just put up the teacher's edition with the answers so they can self-check, and then we'll you know, go over the ones that they need to go over. Um, on each, the, the kids can access the textbook online, and for each lesson at the top, there is a link for them to go to a tutorial-type lesson if they choose to. So for each and every lesson, they have some backup that they can go to if they choose to, if they, ha if they have a computer at home, they can do that. What have you used as far as the assessments that are provided? Um, we use the assessment, the assessment guide. I don't, I don't believe that's online. We have the hard copy. Is, is, we don't use yep. the online. You're, you're right. There's online assessments just like the Reading Street. Mm -hmm. If they want to go in and take the test, mm -hmm. we do a paper copy. Mm -hmm. So we'll take that and take make paper copies, maybe mix and match some of the problems out of there okay. um, and do a paper copy. As, but we use their resources As you for use that. this through the year and we introduced Study Island, which more or less supported the Common Core mm -hmm. um, strategies being tested at PSSA, mm -hmm. did you see, how did you see your students scoring with uh, regards to? Um, they did well. I mean, there definitely was improvement from the first to the second study island. I mean, I think there was a, a, actually a mass majority of them mm -hmm. were proficient. Mm -hmm. um, and even, you know, our, our kids that have struggled a little bit more, you know, maybe a lot of them went from below basic to basic. So you're seeing right? growth. So, so there was growth there. Okay. We do our next one this week yet. Okay. Um, it is definitely more rigorous than what we've seen in the past. Which is what the common right. core is. It needs to be. So it is definitely aligned with that conceptual understanding and building the conceptual understanding first before they get to say an algorithm of how to multiply it. They go through mm -hmm. um, the conceptual understanding, um, with example, of distributed property. They actually use distributed property first to show them how to multiply what they're really doing first before they just show them how to do it. Um, say with division of fractions, there was a lot of modeling in there. Hands on, they, they have we have two big tubs of manipulatives with the program for each in each room. Um, so there'll be fraction pieces and such, and they'll actually model dividing fractions first conceptually before they actually get to okay multiply by the reciprocal, you know type thing. So all that common um, you know is there that common core right. ideas are there to get them on the conceptual stuff so it is definitely deeper each page each lesson has a page of problem solving at the end of the lesson which is definitely more rigorous i think than we've seen in the past it makes them get into some deeper thinking with that feedback from the kids i think they've liked it i mean i haven't i guess specifically asked but they yeah. they definitely seem to like i mean i like that they're writing in it as they're going because I think they're more engaged, mm -hmm. you know, than just say looking at something and they have to constantly, they're constantly with me because they're filling in, you know, and then I'll put something up and kind of, you know, run around the room and make sure everybody's is getting that down. So I think there's always that constant engagement okay. with that, which is good. Okay. Um, they definitely like the kids that will go online and use it online to check things at home. They definitely love that they don't have to carry things home sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, that they can access it there. Or if they forget their textbooks here, they can access it there and we'll print out the pages so they can do it there. Mm -hmm. So I've only heard positive feedback, you okay. know, from them. And how about parents? Any? Um, really nothing. I really haven't heard anything specific. No complaints. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's probably always good. Right. We don't hear complaints. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes no news is good news. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think anything we have heard is positive. So we're going to okay. negative. Good. Okay. So, Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, okay. Am I any still other, on? Or? Well, any other <laughs> any questions, questions that you have for, for Dave? Oh, I have a few. Um, the, there is a textbook available mm -hmm. online, I think Mrs. Andrew yes. said, that comes yep. with this, because I don't see any textbooks that were... The textbooks are all the... Mm -hmm. the, the it's just the workbooks, right? That's, that's, yep. that's, that's what you're considering. This is that's actually the student book. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, okay. yep. Oh, and I did forget to mention, they're color-coded, because the Common Core places special emphasis on certain broader concepts in mathematics. How, how does that... What does that tell you, those colors? That, um, yeah, beyond, I'm sorry, I don't know what um, which colors tie into to yeah, which yeah, uh, no. broader concepts. Yeah, but the common core, there's like just numbers and operations, there's algebraic concepts, oh, okay. and there's geometry, so that's what like the blue, green, oh, purple. Looks like Rob has it for you. Major pieces. <laughs> and these, the chapter ones are color-coded too on the front to go with that, with that breakup. 
And that's the teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's nice because they're just a little, each one's a different chapter. Right, chapters. and that goes with each chapter. Nice so you would get one us. of those for every chapter that okay. you're teaching. Now, when, when they become, when as like each year, obviously part of the contract, part of the, the amount of money that's incorporated into what um, you propose, the, you're getting new ones of these every year for all the students. That and this one. And, and that. And, but yep. the teachers yep. the teachers just keep using the same ones. Correct. And if they, because Correct. of them being paper, if they have to be yep. replaced at some point because they're... This copyright, absolutely, just give me a call and we can replace those, no problem. Okay. Out of fee or...? No, absolutely no fee on Okay, that. all right. Good to know. So these wouldn't be revised if we had a five-year subscription. The teacher, um, if, you know, um, minor match. updates, corrections mainly, and so forth. That just happens automatically, and you get it sort of automatically. So um, if there's a major change, a new technology, a change to the Common so the core, core, then we usually do a new copyright, and then we usually have some type of an upgrade plan mm -hmm. for current users of the program. And the textbook is that um, a PDF then? Uh, it's actually it's, uh, um, it's HTML5, mm -hmm. so it will come up as a uh, electronic book. Um, so I'm not sure. Does so, uh, do the uh, no? So it's not. A, it's not. It's it's, it's advanced beyond right. just a just, just a PDF a file, right? So a Chromebook would have access um, to that, like any other website. Yeah, 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 yeah. HTML5, and the, and the reason we did that was mainly because a lot of programs were built with Flash, and iPads would not support it, and iPads are the fastest uh, adopted technology in education, so um, they kind of helped us make it easy for everybody. Each, so. each student kit, what else is part of the student kit? Is it just the, the workbooks, or do they get new whiteboards every year? Nope, just... Just those student books come every year, and then the Just online the, the access. Okay. Correct. Yep. Um, do they get the whiteboards initially? Yes. So, so yep. twenty-five for the, the, yes, exactly. the initial kit, and then the teachers collect them back. And as they need to be re replaced, we just. Yep. Know yeah. Them. Yeah. That well, was, that was my little part. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> and how many um, sixth graders did we have on that in, in, in trial that I'll this year? Then? Two two hundred ninety-seven. So all all the, six, the entire sixth grade is using yeah. it. Yeah. So how does that tie into to the subscription then? If there's 290 this year, and there's 290 every 200. year for well, the five years. So if there's 300, so, we have to pay more, and if there's less, there's some sort of credit uh, there. So let's say you have a bump or a bubble class that comes up, and right. you need uh, yeah, an extra 50. You, know, you need that 310. So an extra 10 or 15. So you would just buy 10 or 15 one-year licenses for that bubble group, and it's. At, and how about the bubble? The you know, other a, one, a one year pet is probably like twenty five dollars, roughly. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll pull up the exact prices from our catalog for you. Um, you know, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different program. I'll have to pull up the exact. Is it a license for you. like for a range, like up to three hundred so, licenses? Or no, no, it's not uh, like that. It's ju it's just different years, from one year to ten years. You can you can buy subscriptions. So I think the general price uh, we have it is around say eighty dollars uh, for a, a six year subscription. So if you go to ten, that might um, go only up to like ninety five to go up to ten years. But if you go down in years, the per unit price increases. So it's not it's not there's no discount for you buying more subscriptions. It's just the number of years will determine. The, the final price. How about I give you a, a pull up and give you a specific <laughs> Just trying example. to figure out if we're going to get yeah. nickel and dimed on, on this as we commit. Uh, no, let me pull up the exact prices. Well, he's doing that. Mm -hmm. We are committed. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? We mm -hmm. are, yeah, That's in third through sixth grade. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're expanding as the second grade. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because we want to. We want to be able to offer the students the same math program all the way through so that they're constantly building on the same um, curriculum. That makes sense. Right. We want, we want to stop piecemealing curriculum, which is what has been done in the past, where we've had a lot of different things and we would put them all together. And this way it would make a more cohesive um, math curriculum and eventually bring it down to first grade. And Mr. Hurley would love to see it move up. Okay. So... 
Um, to seven and eight. Our staff's looking at samples right now okay. at the seventh and eighth grade level. What and do we currently do in first and seventh? We are using. Um, is it, it's, it's is it Hoop Mifflin? Also, it's yes, it, it's their other series, okay. which is not aligned to Common Core. But I'm not sure how first what first grade would, yeah. how it would or wouldn't impact. We were looking at second grade because in third grade they're they're starting to um, test for okay. the PSSA. They're going to be needing to already have the concepts, so they would already have had it in second grade. I'm not sure how different first grade would look from second grade. That would be a conversation that I would have to have with Dave to, to talk about how that program looks and, and okay. what our current program would you know, be. Do I spend the money at first grade, or do I go and um, recommend to the board that we look at seventh and eighth grade? Let me ask you a right there question. where my hand is. We're teaching this. You'll see the sixth one grade. year yes. and the five year. Child goes to seventh. Yes. So what are they doing? Bought we're bought one year now, we're teaching the common core in all grades right now because we're not using these materials. My, my staff for this year has decided this they're, 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 they're trying to supplement it with their own expertise and knowledge until we got a chance to look at all the materials that came out because the common core is new. Um, we're waiting for it. Like this was created. One thing about this series, it was created from the ground up. Uh, what some textbook companies do is they stamp Common Core on it, and they, it's very loosely aligned. One of the advantages of this series is it was built with the Common Core up, and it was one of the first, and that's one of the reasons why we're looking at it seven yeah. and eight now. And, and one of the, the authors, Matt Larson, was yeah. on some of the Common Core writing committees. Should, should with a new administration, Common Core go out the window? What happens to our contract? Uh, your contract is... As good as gold. Okay. I mean, it's already paid, bought and paid for. So we are automatically shipping you these materials. You know, unless you tell us no, we can't have them anymore. <laughs> you know, there's the question: I don't is, think... Are we committed to it as a district that if Common Core went, but it wasn't a requirement? I don't think home? that it will change the route that testing is taking place at the state level. They are still going to be using the National Common Core for evaluating students, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, uh, including the new teacher evaluation system, it's based on the implementation of the Common Core. So they would have to redo a whole lot of everything in order for this not to go through. It would, it, they would, and they've adopted, and, and honestly the Common Core has been adopted based mm -hmm. upon PSSA testing mm -hmm. being, um, I mean, it's adopted by the Department of Education, and it's, yeah. it's been put into place. And in order for us to be able to achieve with their testing that they're giving us to show that we're making adequate student growth, we've got to stay. And the keystones are aligned to it, too. Correct. So. And there's never any real guarantee, but I think fiscally, the government has put so much money into the development of the Common Core and the teacher evaluation system and things like that in terms of the testing protocols as well. I think it would be hard pressed to see any movement within the next three years or so. And you'd have to justify a decision to go to less rigor. Mm -hmm. Right. No, it's, a, it's been a tough year for Pennsylvania teachers because of the new teacher evaluation mm -hmm. system and the Common Core, and trying to implement a new program is almost the <laughs> toughest thing you could all try to do in one is kind of the... So the proposal that um, I would like for this committee to make to the board so that we can move forward with the purchase of second grade is that the total cost of this proposal would be for $24,592, $24, which would assure us four years of second grade materials. And that would assure you that the second grade subscriptions end at the same time, you're right. third through six. So we're not so. paying for the fifth year. We're, 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 we're taking off a year, and we're going to, so that we're all ending at the same place. Um, and this money has this money has already been written into when I had to write the accountability block grant last year for the 13-14 school year. There was a piece in that grant that was written that math um, books would be used or I'm sorry purchased from that that pool of money that we get. So you're saying the money for this is already allocated through the block grant. Mm -hmm. And what would the teachers do if we didn't buy these books this year at second grade? More importantly, I'd have to give that money. I, I'm not sure how um, my block grant would be reconciled then. So I would have to look and see 
what I would have to do with regards to what I propose to be purchased. The, they would continue to use the, the program that they're using. Which but is? if the money's coming from the block grant and the program ties right into the next grade, mm -hmm. why wouldn't we do it? I mean, exploring all the options. That money can't be spent for something else? Not the way the grant's written for 2013-14. And I'm not sure what else you'd want to um, to do with regards to aligning the math program. So can we have time with the books before we decide? Well, unfortunately, I mean, we're in a. I, I have to. I have to expend this money by June 30th. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to wait, work with Dave with regards to staff development and um, getting a contract signed. So... Yeah. So you need to move on it. I do. I need to move on it because it's May 12th. Yeah. And, um, you know, if this wasn't already in place in grades three through six, yes. you know, we would be having a different conversation. So... Yeah, understandable. Now, these books, are they... And I'm sorry, I got here a little bit late. Yep, so quite all right. Traffic. These books are they part, are they part of your presentation or are these? Th this was this was these given are for you to yep. hold on to. Oh, yep, yep, okay. yep, yep. So, yep. 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 so, so I'm not oh, taking yeah, anything can, here. Yeah, you, you'll have the these to look at. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, well, if we need to move on this, then I move that we recommend to the board that we approve the purchase of these textbooks. Yeah, but you said you have to know by June, right? Well, I have to I have to put in a purchase order to purchase to expend those monies by by June because that's when our fiscal year ends. Now, what I'm thinking is, is Monday the 19th is the next voting meeting. Mm -hmm. But I I have a half day on the 23rd, okay, that um, teachers are coming in for professional development in that afternoon. And part of what I'm trying to do is use the little bit of time that I have for professional development to get them training in the math series so that when they're coming back to school in September that they'll have been trained unlike what happened this year they came in and here's your new math series and you figure it out and so I'm trying to be a little bit more proactive with the the staff and you know here's here's the here's textbooks that were purchased um, obviously not the way that the board would have liked it to have been laid out but it's done it's paid for we're in it for four years, for four more years for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So I'm proposing that as long as we're working with third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth grade, why not bring it to second grade at this point? So that our third grader, so that we can continue to build. Well, the problem I have is no one here ha had any input into this decision, and now we're just, with all due respect, yeah, no, quite all right. We're just Please. perpetuating mm -hmm. a commitment to a series that we haven't even compared uh, what else is out there with it. And right, that's <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, sure. We could that, be very well throwing good money after bad. I'm thinking that it's not bad money from the support yeah. of the I staff member that's I, I using it. I respect that we've only used it at the middle school. Series, very, very closely aligned, very rigorous. I mean, I have no qualms. We did look at as I mean, last year we were asked to look at a few different series as the teachers. And this was the one that you know stood out the best. So I, I just I have a tendency to agree at the middle school level. I'm just concerned about the the methodology with at the at the elementary level and whether we're teaching all of the if, 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 all of the ways to the techniques to learn these things, or is it just as one? Uh, that's what's one of the criticisms of the Common Core is that it, you will learn it this way and this way only. And I'm wondering if we would no, no, not district. at all. No, 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 no. We, we, it teaches what they call some alternative algorithms. For example, you know, 10 plus 22 can be found by adding the tens column first, then adding the ones columns. And the idea is to show different or multiple representations, thus allowing the students to choose the one that fits best with the way they like to think Without about having math. a chance to look at the books. Oh. Right. See that for if, myself. If you'll, if you'll go to a student book, you'll notice the way all the student lessons start out. There's an investigation that takes place that is teacher directed. Andrew, did you have something? To add? Yeah, it's. I mean, the the PA core rollout is based on looking at multiple algorithms in order to 
get to solving a problem. Whereas before in our PA standards, it was one algorithm, and we can see this in the secondary level as well, where they were taught one algorithm with little conceptual and analytical understanding. So they're looking to give them multiple pathways so that then they can cue their learning style to connect with the way that works best for them. So there are multiple pathways presented in this textbook. I was going to say, each lesson pretty much there's often like method one will say method one, like method two. So okay. I mean, we'll go through, and, and I came from the elementary, so I taught a fifth grade as well mm -hmm. prior to this, but just, you know, I think it does align with the same types of things in our goals of teaching at the elementary and, and here at the middle school. But we do teach them varying ways, and I always okay. tell my kids, you know, whichever, whichever way, way works, works for you. So we're not introducing a math series that the parents cannot help their, their own children with at home. There no, will be a method I, that no, every I've, parent... Of all the math programs we have, this is the one that is easiest for parents to help at home and the easiest for teachers to pick up and implement as well. I'm looking at this, and I think it's very straightforward. Not like some of these things you see online, common core gone wrong, where it's very confusing. I don't know. I mean, that's just yeah, my that's view. And quite honestly, too, to speak to your point about parents, I think it's helpful, too, I mean, if, if we begin to have those types of issues, that we could offer parent workshops and things like that mm -hmm. if there are different types of ways the math is being presented. Because I, I do see your point. that They're being taught a different way than their parents are being taught. Right. Mm -hmm. So in order to explain it, they're having to teach themselves. So I think it lends itself so to So they are or connection. they're not being taught a different way than the parents have learned? They are being taught differently. They are. Yes. Parents would have been traditionally taught, there's one way to do this, let's just memorize these steps. You know, and if you just memorize steps, then you can apply this memorization of steps and come out with the correct answer. Well, what happens is, and what happens on these more rigorous testing is they change the way the questions go. Uh, for example, there was a very famous study done um, in educational psychology with groups of five and six year old students and they gave them these sort of two-step thinking problems where um, they would test them once a week and the questions were, okay, there's 10 animals and there's, uh, oh, so there's three cats and five dogs, how many animals? And that you get used, you, you, the kids will pick up on that pattern very quickly. Well, all of a sudden the pattern will change and say, okay, well now there's seven animals and there's four cats. How many dogs are there? So they really have to think and analyze each and every question. And the power, uh, in, in the groups of students that tested the best were the ones that were given a big picture explanation of the problem. Not so much, well, four plus three is really seven, you had four plus three is eight. It's the ones who say, well, we're talking about animals here, and we ha see we have a number of cats, how many have kids have cats at home, dogs, you know? Um, when students, when you give them that big picture, they connect to what they already know. No new learning can take place without connecting it to what you already know. So when you have a, see a lesson starting out with let's listen and let's draw, let's connect to the mathematical concept here, um, and then let's check that understanding. Show me on your math board some of these problems. Now let's work with a partner in a small group and do some together. So there's a lot of opportunity for students to give their own perspective, how I solved it. And that's also a tie-in with the Common Core. It's not just what we teach, but now it's how we teach it. And there's these things called the mathematical practices. And you will find on the Think Central website uh, that parents also have access to are the authors of the series talking about the math practices and showing them how they're enacted in a math classroom. And the teachers are being evaluated on how they're teaching the same as what we're expecting students to do in testing. So that's how it's all tied together. And Karen, I, may, I may, may have misheard something you said. You said something about you can understand middle school, but this is second grade. But we're also doing it already in third, fourth, and fifth grade. We haven't implemented third, fourth, and fifth grade yet. Right, but we have the We have it, we've yeah, paid the bill. We haven't implemented them yet. Right. So we don't know what the, the effect on the children is yet or the grades. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just going to give you an example. We had in the previous series, um, in younger grades, you would do addition and subtraction on base 10. I've seen with the core rollout switching bases. So the difference between understanding borrowing in a base 10, where you can follow a specific set of steps, is a little bit different when you change it to a base 6. So they have to have more of a logistic understanding of the process. So and there's a little bit more of that analytical piece. So that's an example of how parents would not be able to help at home? Not that they wouldn't yeah. be able to help, um, just in the way that some of the activities are structured, in the way, if you've seen the new multiplication 
the way that the strategies are for new multiplication, which is actually being done now in classrooms with the other series as well. But it's just a different, it's a different approach to get to an end result. And the intention would be that some of the approaches might be more effective for some students. Some students might need more visual, auditory, tactile involvement mm -hmm. in their learning. Now, let's say a student is struggling to learn with not just this series, but any series. What are the steps taken? And I don't want to diverge too much from our topic because we are on mm -hmm. item one and we've already spent 30 minutes. But how do you identify those students? Is it through testing or... What and that, that it's through thing? testing. They're identified. It's, it's through scores, through Study Island, where if they're not build, if they're not making a proficient score, it's Study Island and online. Study or? Island is what we have. It's a it's a, a, a practice Benchmark program. Assessment. It's a bench okay. right, which is is dict is more or less predicting how they're going to um, do on the okay. on the test, so that we can make sure that we're using that data to drive instruction and get the the students that are not at that proficient level, and then those are the students that we identify to be pulled out and have that math interventionist work with them. And that math intervention begins in first grade? Correct. And it goes all the way up, up until... Up to, we had it, we had, yeah. well, it's here. I mean, I'll give you a real simplistic example okay. of how a common everyday thing that would happen in, like, Chris's classroom or Mike Althaus's classroom, um, there would be a topic of the day they're working and they work through the kids. They might do a strategy at the end of the class called Ticket Out the Door, which basically has that answer and problem that gives them, did they understand the objective for the day or not? If a student didn't object, uh, understand the objective for the day, um, the teacher would call them in for extra tutoring during their IHT time. And so that, that would be a, a very common practice that I see on a frequent basis right. within our building. And then those students yeah. who are not making any gains receives that more intensive extra support time right. from the basic skills. We're call, then, I'll call them basic skills because yeah, that's yeah. how we have it laid out as okay. far as part and of I'm our budget. I'm just trying to understand based on Mrs. Bites' questions. If a student isn't learning in the way that this is set up, there are alternative ways that student can be taught in this individualized setting, right? Right. So what do you but, mean we're going to continue trying? It's not working for that student. Correct. Be, okay. But we want to try to help them be able to comprehend and understand in that way because... Yes, that's how it, it continues. And that's how they're going to be tested. Yeah. We can't alter the test that's evaluating how we're performing as a, as a district or a school. What, I think one of the biggest pieces of the, the Common Core itself and also this math series is the incorporation of writing because they, research says that if a student is able to explain what they're learning to a peer or to another individual, it's a, it's a higher level of thinking rather than just being able to output the answer to yeah. kind of play teacher themselves. So it, it does permit the students to have more of explanation. I don't know. I don't have any more questions on this. I know it's been something that we've been discussing for a while now. I'm okay for, for, for discussion, but should we have a period where the, the our public can weigh in in some way? You know, a little time to hear if there's people here. I don't know if they would want to. They have experiences or comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a figure argument. You guys must take that. Hearing this and knowing how the board and the teachers that he's going to take the course, I worry.
grow with them um, going forward. And again, the fact that they've implemented it somewhere. I mean, I, I have the question, okay, so we missed the year, but we're going to what happens to that year? Can we tag it on to the end? Like, how are we going to use those resources that we set at the side? That's where I start thinking, okay, push it out a year or whatever the case may be, because we are ready. Thank you, chosen, Mrs. Weber. This was chosen by teachers. Like the whole, this wasn't just hand. I'm, I'm not really sure how the process was because I wasn't okay. involved with it initially. I just know that we have it in place, and when the elementary teachers started to look at it and use it, they didn't feel like they were doing it with fidelity, and they want it in servicing, and they wanted to see how it was working at the sixth grade level. Okay. So I was not involved with the whole process of it being purchased. I don't know. If you ever got to look at it before, and if it's something you chose, this was okay. okay. And I, I, unfortunately, you cannot tack the year on to the end. So the there, more there time are, that goes by without that we use, using it, right. it's unfortunately wasted time. Right. Right. Yes, we have them. Oh, we have them. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. yes. And we technically do have them for an additional year, so they don't get. Unused. Mrs. Right. Torshin, right. we're recommending to us that we move forward with this and you need it by the end of the month, pretty much. Okay. In order for me to be able to work with Dave and, and to okay. be able to set up my second, um, un, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 when we talked about this in April. Yeah. My view is I, I know that we have issues in general as a board and as mm -hmm. a community would come before, but this has been months in the process and if the teachers recommend it and you guys recommend it and you think it's best to move forward and, and uh, have an in-service day for this, I think we should vote on it as a board tonight. Um, that's my view. There is two other members of the committee. I'm sorry, I couldn't wait till the voting meeting. Well, I guess we would be waiting. We're not, we wouldn't be voting on this tonight yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, I would like it voted on tonight. Oh, you yeah. would? Okay, mm -hmm. so it would be a... Yeah. I, I want to be able to move forward. Okay. The next in service is May twenty third. Okay, I think it was under the voting right. item, I and that voting. would be n okay. not this Friday, but the following Friday. So in two weeks, I'm asking, or in four days, I would be asking Dave to turn around and try to get me trainers, okay. which he has kind so, of as yeah. a placeholder, but he needs a contract. He needs yeah, a commitment. The commitment. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the answer for Mrs. Torsh is that we cannot wait until the voting meeting. Well, she'd prefer not. Well, I won't have staff development then on the 23rd with, with GOMATH. So, and I won't have time before the start of the school year to be able to have it as well because we only have one day with the teachers before school starts in September. So I'll be in the, and I, I will have had half of the training that. And that's one of the issues you mentioned before the teachers didn't feel like they had enough mm -hmm. prep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I think that we should move on it. That's my view. Were you two co-chair of this? So I was <laughs> well, you're on, you're on the um, committee. Somebody yeah. has to make a motion. Yeah. I guess, well, I'm, am I allowed to make a motion as chair? <laughs> on this committee, certainly. Yeah. All right, then I move that Connor we... Connor Church joined us about uh, 6.15. Thank you. I move that we approve the textbook purchase. There's only three of us on the committee here. What's going on? We need a second. You, you need a second, right? Well, I don't Is know. that what you're waiting for? No, you need a consensus yeah, on the committee. There's one person who we're waiting on, it seems. I think this is by so you do not want to approve. I do not. No, okay. I would have appreciated so more time. So what do you want to do? Come on. I think we need to. Okay. I mean, and, and I'll be honest. I, I don't like it, and this is something we've talked about, mm -hmm. that in the future we're not going to do voting at non-voting meetings, but... I understand tonight. Right. And I thought that it was, I thought that at the last committee meeting that we were okay with moving on. So that's my And uh, thank you for bringing these through the committee. I really appreciate that. I can understand mm -hmm. the desire on your part maybe to, to do it easily and just sign the contract. Oh, no, no, no. I would prefer for it to, to, to flow out. And okay. I was, I didn't look at this as being a new program because it was already in place. I was looking at adding it. 
and I was in the past nobody would have ever brought it to your attention. Okay. So Which is what, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm bringing it to the attention, and 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 in the future, any other textbooks that would be purchased would be brought forward as a recommendation of everybody, Great. and then for you to. And, you know. and that's why I, I, I'm going along with it. Is we're already doing it in, in four grades. Mm -hmm. And, and the money's already allocated through a block grant. Mm -hmm. I see no reason not to. Yeah. Except in, if, if we were interested in shifting gears and going with another set of materials, this is the time to do it. But if you're going to shift gears and go to another set of materials, aren't you going to have to do that for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade when also? The, when the subscription expires, absolutely. Right, and I'm well, only, is, I'm only recommending not, that this go until this, the end of the other subscription. I'm not right. looking for it to go a year out further. Right. I'm looking right. at the I four years. I recognize yeah. that, yeah. But now that's it. I mean, it's going to be sixth, seventh, seventh, eighth, ninth. It's, it's all the way. We're committing to the series. No, no you're not. Second grade. Second grade. Right. Yeah. To the, but next set of approvals would, would, of course, we would have all, we would be committed to this going all the way out now. This well, cements the decision from a previous administration. Well, the decision, because the, the contract goes how many more years anyway. Four. Four. So it's been cemented. It's just con continuing, I mean, adding to it. Um, but mm -hmm. I think it doesn't make sense, and I'm not an expert in this, but if you if you have one different textbook for one grade and another, like we had in the past, I think it makes more sense to have some cohesive unit. Um, it's all tied to the common core. Dave, you got four years to convince us to read the contract. <laughs> gotcha. I'm sorry. Gotcha. I didn't mean to do that. Because last year I thought it was, almost, she had a six year. So she I'm under the impression that it's five, a five year contract. With the first time. Yeah, five years. Last year, so this year, the four year contract. So then everything will expire at the same time. Right. Um, yeah, I'd love for you guys to continue with this program. If it doesn't meet your needs, we have a number of other programs I'd be happy to consider you. I wouldn't want to lose you as a customer just because you you know don't particularly like one thing we have to offer. We have a number I don't think of it has anything to do with what you're offering. I think it's, it's a general more, I think it's more the issue, yes. right. how much of a commitment we want to make to the program, knowing that it is still in somewhat in flux. Okay, well, I think we can move on then, now that we've made our recommendation to the full board. Uh, GPA and academic honors discussion. Earlier today, I sent out an email to the board members who are not on this thank committee. You, oh, yes, thank you. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Um, I sent out an email to the members of the board who are not on this committee asking if they had any topics that we should discuss because there is a full board of nine and only four of us are on this committee. And this was a topic recommended by a board member um, we discussed this in previous years. There was an issue last year, and without giving too many details, um, we calculate who is first in the class, second in the class, and third in the class. Thank you, by the way. Um, based on the end of third quarter grades. And it's happened in previous years where somebody who has been first in the class, second in the class, or third in the class, by the time graduation rolls around, they are no longer first, second, or third in the class, and somebody else is instead. Right. So there was a question from a board member if that policy has been changed, and if it hasn't been, then I believe that board member's position is it should be. Um, so my question would be, has that policy been changed? Like, let's say you have, I have 102 GPA in third quarter, but in fourth quarter I don't go to class, and my GPA falls to, I don't know, 95, which is still a great GPA, but it doesn't put me in the top By three. policy, do you mean real policy that's board-approved policy that stands in as read for, you know, three months before it can be adopted? Or do you well, mean just the procedures on how The procedures, I don't think we have a board policy for okay. that, and maybe we do. Then I'm going to have to well, defer. I know that Mr. Heinkel wanted to put something in place for this year, um, and I could be wrong if I thought that he had mentioned that to you. He did. He, we right. did have conversation okay. about it. Be, uh, and he, wanted them to, he wanted a letter for the basically the top 10 students, but really targeted toward those three, yeah. just to have them understand that. Um, if they tank it at the very end, you don't get to be number okay. one, number two, or number three, because that was the case. Yes, in a previous, yes. at right. least one previous year where um, one of the the three who spoke was not yes. in the top three anymore and took that away from someone else. And because we didn't have anything in place, that continued. But yes, we do feel that that is 
not appropriate for that to happen. Um, there are obvious reasons why at the end of the third quarter that's when we take that those TPAs because there's a lot of preparation involved for yeah. you know the end. So there's a reason why that's the time when that's decided. But I know that that was something that um, we had wanted to put into place so that we don't have a situation like that again. Yeah. At the last curriculum meeting, we, we agreed that class rank would be determined at the end of each marking period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the only question in my mind is, can you determine the class, or do well, you, have, gonna, you have all the grades in by that time? You're, we're gonna, you're gonna have to create, I think, a drop dead deadline because mm -hmm. the end, yes. you're gonna have to know who your people are exactly before that point. But I think that what he wants, what Mr. Henkel is proposing, is that after that deadline, if some, if there is a huge mishap with somebody, and that they would just yeah. fail miserably because they figure, oh, I got it locked up, that they should be held accountable for that action. And that, you know, mm -hmm. after that drop dead deadline, one more spot ought to be done just to make sure that everybody stayed in, in, in you know, place. I don't think I'm doing a good job of interpreting what he wants, but uh, that's what he well, wants I, to I say. Wanna... He wants to safeguard that the right people yeah. are speaking. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to go back to, to what we discussed last time, though, that we, we right. the numbers change daily. Right. A am I correct that if you have a sufficient grade, you don't even have to take a final? Yes, that is. That, and most play, a lot so, of schools have that. So why don't why don't you do it up until the week before the finals? Does that give you sufficient time? I'd have to ask. Well, the, high the school. students do have to write their speech. They have to practice their speech. They have to do all of those mm. things. I would guess that that's probably something that they want to be working on for longer than a week. Mm. Um, so my but tell them to write their speech, and if they tank the grade, then but they I'm just did saying, it for if nothing. you're if you're four to ten. And now all of a sudden you're one, two, or three. Now all of a sudden you're writing a speech. You're, you know, there's mm -hmm. all of those different things. I'm just thinking that they might need a little bit more time than a week. I'm not saying that they need much more, but I just think in fairness, I mean, if you're giving a speech to the entire class plus all of those people, that's something you might want to work on. For and they don't even really have a week because they start practicing, speaking, and, and doing all. Of was, 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 it you, was third so, quarter? What what was used as the as the ground rule last year? Of like where where did we stop? Well, when, when third quarter is absolutely complete, when we know that every single thing is there, if a student had an incomplete or a medical mm -hmm. or whatever happens in there, as soon as that's all cleared up, that's the reading then that becomes one to wherever. Okay. And that's where they end the year. So um, what Mr. Henkel and what you very well said is that basically that's the deadline. Right. But then there would be kind of a checkup day right. where, Midway. say, May 15th or something, right. where that would be the day that, again, we would, and I would say that we would have sufficient notice to yeah. any teachers of seniors that they would know, please make sure that you have everything updated, all your grades in at this point, so that it's not where, you know, we got into the, the discussion last time where, people's GPAs change daily based yeah. on, you know, this test may not have been entered or this kid was absent and they right. didn't have his homework. I'm and hopefully, you just come up with a realistic sure date. Right. And hopefully the student's okay. knowing that, I mean, in an ideal world, no student would deliberately And that, that was, that was something part, that Mr. Yes. Definitely yeah. wanted. This year that's never happening. But, <laughs> well, but you never know when that yeah. could be the case. Yeah. So, and, and we know that, this, that seniors in general they just, when it's the end, I was shocked how many students don't have a B average and have to take the final, and it's because of this last, these last few months. Mm -hmm. They know they're accepted to college. They just, you know, they're having a good time, and that's not their, some of their focuses yeah. anymore. And I mean, and that's fair. I'm not saying that they're wrong or right. It's just mm -hmm. we need to, you know, keep our integrity with yes. making sure that those three are the three. And right. it's not... One, the only two, thing is, six. if you set a date, you have to make yes. sure that all the grades are submitted mm -hmm. by that right, date. Right. So there's not correct the same question we had before. Mm -hmm. And that's what I will direct the high school administration to come up with a um, realistic date, like you said, to be able to evaluate who are our top three, and then mid date you check again and make sure that our standings are there and let everybody know one to ten. Yeah. You're, you're, you're top three at the end of this quarter, but if you start to mm -hmm. slack off and you move, 
then you could be jeopardizing your position to be yeah. able to speak and next person in line start working on your you know yeah, yeah. all right okay thank you i think that satisfies yeah. just making sure that we're still on top of that i'll report back to the board on that then finally come core update um do you I'm have re defer to andrea if she has anything burning at the moment. Oh. <laughs> um, there really haven't been any changes. Um, I think it's important for us to at some point have a conversation about the, the impact of the new teacher evaluation system mm. because they're very much tied to teacher-specific reporting that comes out of the testing process, and I think that that's an important piece for you to know. Um, in the limited time that we have, I don't think that I can do it with fidelity. So if we can okay. make arrangements to have that. Yeah, we'll put that on the agenda. I'm very interested in that, and I think that everybody else, that's exciting, yeah. <laughs> exciting, so a little bit. <laughs> now, is that specifically referencing the PVAAS? PVAAS. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, there yes. are, eventually there are four components that are a part of the new teacher evaluation system, and the um, leadership is also rolling into a new evaluation system as well. But part of it is there's a three-year rolling average that is tied to the PBOS data, which comes directly from Keystone or PSSA testing. There is another 15% that comes directly from those building scores. So you're familiar mm -hmm. this year we had an SPP score, a school performance profile for right. each building. Maybe so what you can do well. is we can plan for you to do a presentation to the yeah. board in, in, in August. We don't meet in July. Forget June. Um, I think that we're going to be pretty tied down with whatever we're doing budgetarily, or, or, or if you would like something. I mean, I just don't see it. No, I think August is good. The, yeah, you know, the, and we may uh, have our testing. We well, that might be a little bit early. I think September is really when the PD is a little bit behind. Yeah, yes. and it's yeah. better if you do it to the whole board right. rather than having to do it twice. Yeah. So you could do the, pretty much the presentation that you do in the training of the teachers in regards to. <coughs> The whole evaluation tool, yeah. We and we, it's not something that you'd have to reinvent. We have um, a PowerPoint put in place. Great. And after being involved in it for a year, we probably will be able to do a better explanation. Um, well, I'm not going to say we, Andrea will, because I pretty much handed that off to her. Um, Great. And Jenny, if you wanted to chime in with regards to if you want to tag team and you don't want to stand up there all alone, Andrea, and you want to. Pull Jenny in with you for. This is the queen of peace. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so you can have um, the two vanas uh, doing the, the presentation um, at the secondary level, and any input that you want from Mary Beth Kiesel for the elementary level, because we do have experts of both elementary and secondary, <laughs> highly qualified experts, certified. Great. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Any questions, Mrs. Blaze? Do you have anything? Nope, thank you. All right. Why MCA proposal, Mrs. Torsha? Um, well, I want to talk to you. Uh, when I started with my realignment proposal and some conversation that I had had with the board was that I would like to, and, and I really had this conversation because Mrs. Bites gave me her ear and, and she was um, very supportive with, with helping. Um, I wanted to create some type of partnership with I was looking at a community, at a college, or some other um, daycare or, or educational facility. In that process, in all of the information we had out in the news, I had gotten someone had gotten in touch with me. Great. Meanwhile, Mrs. Bites is, is pounding the pavement with the college, starting with Alvernia, because that was one of the schools that I, I wanted to to try to partner with to see, you know, what could we do to offset kindergarten. And the YMCA program came, the YMCA executive director came to me and said, I have what you're looking for. And I was like, I was told that you weren't interested. And he said, and I apologize that you were told that or that that was, you know, the idea, but we're very interested. Mm -hmm. We already have this program in two school districts, Owen J. Roberts and um, Pottstown. So what they have done is they put a proposal together to lease space um, at Monocacy Elementary Center to be able to provide an educational environment for children who are waiting to go to their PM kindergarten or place to go to after they've been in their AM kindergarten and to follow curriculum that we have that we want to see being used in kindergarten. Great. Um, it's a matter of us saying we would like that. 
we could do a couple of different things with them with regards to, you know, um, saying to parents, we do have a program that we would yeah. like to see you go into. You know, if you use that, we'll transport to this. If you're at Amity, you know, obviously if you're at Monocacy, then your children would be able to opt into it. They already are set up with the state to be able to provide reduced cost to parents who have um, economic struggles yes. that, that they're already set up with, with the state. So any child that, you know, um, gets free and reduced lunch would get a discounted. I'm not sure how discounted. If it would be free, I don't know what yes. their... their um, with the direct connection so they, have, because a they're, they're, they have it already set up and being that they're in Pottstown which you know that um, yeah. school district has, has a lot of um, poverty problems and the amount of children that they have in the program mm -hmm. um, it's great so I, I have the proposal uh, I can present to the whole board tonight but I thought I would you know kind of scratch the service with you then on top of it um, Mrs. Bites had made a contact with Alvernia same week, I had a meeting with Alvernia. They couldn't provide what we were looking for. They, they wouldn't be able to put into place that piece. But they're very, very interested in partnering with us to be able to utilize um, our school to flow children, you know, the students through for practical oh, okay. experience and for them to provide any kind of professional staff development to our staff at you know we would barter it would probably Great. be free because wow. of what we're doing i mean we already do a lot with their student teachers but they would know that they'd have a um early childhood center that they could you know participate yeah. in which would give extra hands to the why mm -hmm. which they would absolutely love and you know being that you're on a semester it wouldn't you know obviously be 180 straight days mm -hmm. but it would be close because of the way that their breaks are yeah. so it looks very promising to be able Great. to move forward. So it's a matter of dollars. I don't, they, in their proposal that they provided me, they structured or they stated that, and I, I apologize that I didn't make more copies, but I can share one with you and if you guys want to look over each other. They, they stated that um, the Y will pay a mutually agreed upon fee to the school district for use of the schools. And the Danny Boone School District would, would provide transportation, which we already are, and classroom and curriculum guidance, and which we had no problem with. I spoke to one of our element or one of our kindergarten teachers, and she told me that she already had been talking to parents about what I was trying to promote, and she has a few parents that said I would put my children in that program. Well, I, I want to interrupt that. there. I know that with realignment and all of that, there mm -hmm. have been some issues. Parents have wondered, like, right. what am I going to do with my students? Right. So we need more details, of course, before any, for a contract, we're going to sign a contract, but uh, my preference would be to you move ahead that. as quickly as possible right. because you want to get these parents to know about this before they make right. alternate arrangements. And I was, and I would put out, I, if, if, they, if you want me to continue to pursue this, and this is, you know, obviously some type of revenue that we didn't yeah. have, um, just in a service for our families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Couple of questions. We have space. We have sufficient space in Monocacy. We we do. Mm -hmm. Even after okay. realignment. Even, well, especially after realignment, because with me only having kindergarten in there for half a day, and I would have possibly four. We're talking four four class. Well, I'm not sure exactly what'll come out to. It might be five, which would mean would which would equate to three classrooms. Um, that you're. Mm -hmm. using, You're only using, using hand, right, the right. Afternoon. There is space, and because the band, because the fourth and fifth grade is at Birdsboro, that band room that was used oh. in the past, which is a nice room that's carpeted, would also provide ample space okay. within yeah. the building. Okay, so we have there would space. be space. Mm -hmm. You don't have any dollar figures. On they this. didn't provide me the dollar figures it, because that, I mean, you know, for it to yes. be to be approved, we need, uh, we need dollar right. figures well, think, as to their lease and dollar figures as to. I think what you need, what I wanted to do with the board is have conversation about what are you what what would your thoughts be as far as what we would lease that space for. We have a current contract, and I apologize. I should have looked at what we're charging them currently for leasing our um, cafeteria space for the amount of hours that they do. So mm -hmm. I can easily get that and disseminate it to the board. But well, I'd also like to know what they're paying Pottstown and O&J Roberts. And I mm -hmm. asked for that, and 
We did this so quick that I will get that information as well. But I then, what to, do they what do they charge the families in? I wanted to know. I wanted to know that as well too. So, those are those are the questions that I don't have answers yeah. to. But um, because I, I agree with Connor, I, I think if we actually do this, that a letter needs to go out to the parents yeah. as soon as possible, saying, "Here's an alternative for you for the other half of the day." At lunch, we, we could work it out that children could purchase the lunch. They wouldn't eat in the cafeteria. They could, they could get their lunch, or we could even work with the, with the um, Sodexo to come up with a more practical, perhaps, lunch menu for kindergarten, which they may not eat the same. Certainly, kids could continue to pack lunch like they always, you know. Always could. They Right, mm -hmm. so right, it's just a matter of, right, you know, and you probably know. incur a cost. I don't know. My, my kindergarten, my well, kindergarten right now is 145 a week, which is on the higher side, mm -hmm. but she's only there half day with a feeder lunch. Mm -hmm. So that's just, you know, mm -hmm. it's probably higher because she does, in comparison to other places, don't provide lunch, but right. it's a lot of so well, we just I, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I, I just think there's, there's some questions yep. that need to be answered so that the full board can vote on it and did you say it was be for the p.m. Um, it would be for only? both no nope, it would be, it for, would be for both so children that go to a.m. kindergarten go to a.m. kindergarten children that go to p.m. kindergarten would get on the bus and I'll have to talk to to Ron about the busing as well they would get on the bus to come to Monocacy Elementary Center go to the Y program Think and then nope well yes if, if children from Amity wanted to participate we would have to include them I don't think I have space at Amity for the 14-15 school year to offer a classroom to the Y. Mm -hmm. I, I would maybe I, after that. Right. I That's have to right. look the, and the kids from Amity would have to be taken home anyway. Right. So to be taken to Monocacy Which is instead. really very close. Yeah. Yeah. And would there be curriculum writing necessary for that? Not really. So you, it would it would be curriculum that the, the kindergarten teachers aren't getting through that I think that they would be recommending that here's what we would like or here's our curriculum, reinforce it. Mm -hmm. So now you have a longer amount of time. Here's what we did today. Could you reinforce it? Could you work on it? You know And these programs already exist at these two other schools, so correct. Whatever modification might be needed for here shouldn't be that extreme. I wouldn't think so. Um, and the children would still be able to participate if parents needed to drop their kids off at six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning. The before, before, before program is already still in place too. So then they would just, you know, so if parents are dropping children right. off at at um, Monocacy already for before school pro daycare, they right. would be able to go in that, and then their people would know who would go right into the other class. There and is, after school, we have there, that. There is one added cost I just thought of. But because of what you just said, if, if you start your child in this early program or morning program at Monocacy, mm -hmm. but they're going to do kindergarten in mm -hmm. the afternoon at Amity, now we're going to have to take those kids over to Amity. So we, we, that we would have to, we, I, I talked about that as well um, a little bit with Dan, that's the gentleman's name, I believe it's Dan. Um, and. Um, I was kind of like talking to the wrong person. So mm -hmm. it, that would be conversation that I would have to have because I think because it's entirely their program, if you are a kindergartner, the, the problem would be with the Amity children. Well, yeah. and, and, and it's not, not problem, it, it's but not, no, it's not if it's done right because right. it's not a huge cost if those buses were roads buses because they have to come back up past right. Amity anyway. anyway right. Correct. And so, Mrs. Torture, we, we said that maybe next year you would be able to have a room for them to do it at Amity also. Correct, right? because that, that would be my ultimate goal, is to be able to have it, as long as my enrollment is above 700 at Amity. And no I know there's right. a large yeah. group instruction room that classes aren't typically taught in. Half of it's being used for oh, kindergarten okay. class because we're packed at the gills. Okay. And I don't see any... Um, we were going to have a little bit of relief because there were four first grades going into six second grades, but because those four first grades have 26 children mm -hmm. in, yeah. my recommendation to the board was that I'm going to put them into five classrooms so that I don't have, you know, 
Mm -hmm. So I don't gain a classroom there. Okay. And I have five <coughs> kindergartens coming into four first grades that I'm recommending okay, that was just going a to five first grades, mm -hmm. which was all a part of that proposal. Okay. So we, yeah. there might be one room. <laughs> And I will look at it very closely. If okay. it is one room and that half day kinder, and it depends on what my kindergarten enrollment is. Right now, we have 99 students in kindergarten in Amity. For when this, do you this have current your final numbers? Mm. Or don't have numbers. August. Okay. Right now, currently enrolled for 1415 at Amity is 68. So that's. Okay. But we were about 68, and then all of a sudden we had a big, huge yeah. jump. Okay. And they would be willing to. Interested in leasing the, the, the room mm -hmm. at Amity? I, I talked to him about that. On and short I, notice? Yeah. I'm sure that if it was the same amount of students and they can figure that, mm -hmm. whatever they would have made off of the group going to Monocacy versus Amity, I'm sure they would rather keep their kids in that same area. But, I mean, the why would be, it would be. They would be, uh, they would be fine because they have a morning program at Amity already oh, and an do. after school okay. program. And so okay. those kids would just roll back and okay. forth. Now, what are you recommending to us? We want to get this implemented as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But that being said, we need to get some numbers. I need to talk to Dr. Sparagana at Pottstown. Okay. And I don't think that our alignment would be the same as his because of his socioeconomic. Yes. So I need to reach out to the superintendent or his yeah. um, person. To, to find out what what is the cost. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to get is what do we need to do? I think more or less just you're going to make keep... a presentation to the board. Yeah, so I'm, right. I'm going yep. to I'm going to minus, we minus like numbers. You to move. Right, keep moving. Right, yeah. right. I, I'm yep. just yes. ask. Do you we want will. me to continue doing this? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think. All right. Great. We do. Right. Yes. Absolutely. And and as well as creating that continued partnership with um, yeah. Alvernia, they're excited. They left like they were two kids in a candy <laughs> store, and that they just got to do and have whatever they wanted. They were just so excited about. Somebody reaching out to them, number one, you know, because larger colleges mm -hmm. usually get to have opportunities mm -hmm. to do this, and they feel like, wow, we're getting included, and, and we can, you Great. know, grow a relationship. And that, again, was uh, student teaching opportunities in mm -hmm. exchange for teacher development. Correct. That would be like and it would be um, also, like, students who need to get hours of observation time and to be in a classroom. There's many times mm -hmm. that they have to come in. If we have an at-risk mm -hmm. group or special ed, like, having their people come in into our classrooms. To yeah. or any building, any classroom. Yeah, and I did tell them that I would, I would open it up to them now, to 12. Now, for the, um, what is it? Oh, yeah, for the partnership and exchanging the continuing mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. courses. How does that work now? Do teachers have the ability to choose where they want to well, go? Well, what or? they would do is um, they, they were even looking at possibly giving a reduced cost for any kind of credited okay. type of participation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, but who, but we right can't now mandate we don't have, that everybody goes to Alvernia. No, but we can yeah. say yeah. your yeah. money could go a lot further if you went through Alvernia. Yeah, and yeah. that probably is interesting. That was no. the other thing, Carol, that they said that maybe they could work something out to where we could get reduced costs for credits as well. Like any teacher that goes mm -hmm. there to, to, you know, continue their education through a graduate level, that they could talk to us about that as well. Great. Do we have anything else on this? We're not going to get through everything <laughs> on the agenda. But no, Mrs. I just, Bites, I, I just said to to Mrs. Bites that we're, we're going to leave some time okay. for public participation. We're going to yeah. have to go soon to get well, to the other meeting. How about then we ask for public participation if there is any feedback, and if there is not, we can continue to move on, and we can choose one or two of these topics to discuss briefly. I can yeah. give information on the update of the strategic plan then. Okay. Any public comment? Well, <laughs> we're going to get to the strategic plan and to what the next like meeting to date. To? Yeah, what, what do you? How would you? What would you like? Is there something that you would like? Um, any kind of information on? No. Are you okay. Sure? okay. No, but, but what you're going to talk about depends on. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to ask. So we're going to talk about the strategic plan, and then, well. If you want to come, we'll leave some time at well, the end if we do Did, you, yes. did you have Let's a quick question on the assessment schedule? Uh, for this actually, thing? we can leave that discussion uh, for later discussion on the time okay. with the assessments. Because a lot, of the, a lot of the assessment just, dates are dictated to us by the state. We don't get to choose. 
other than all and other right, I guess than I was just wondering like math reading grades three four five six seven eight March seventeen to twenty eight that's PSSA Is testing that, does that mean every kid is testing you know, that period seventeenth eighteenth yeah I'm those are the dates yeah so every uh, class a period every day every kid is being third fourth and fifth grade is usually doing it in a block of time first thing in the morning the middle level does it differently probably yeah. according to their schedule and it's basically the morning is used right for testing. so maybe maybe that'll be more relevant when we start talking about how the teachers are evaluated in relation to the, the testing right, right? well that, that testing is we have to test for those dates per right, the right. department that's what you're saying but somehow they are tied to our teacher assessment oh also, yeah right mm -hmm. so yeah, maybe that would all uh, very much so. Even package dates. together in yeah. that discussion. Even the dates. Even the dates. I look forward to that <laughs> presentation. So I'm willing to let that go. Um, block scheduling. I just wanted to. See if I just didn't want that to fall through the yeah, cracks. Yeah, I didn't do anything with it, but you know, it's certainly something that we can begin to explore very early on. And oh, I yeah. can set up a, vi a visit to Conrad Weiser because that's my connection to yeah. somebody that's totally vested in it. Um, I know this was something that we went over yeah. last year. Well, we did it as a cost saving. Yeah. We, we looked we, at it with previous boards as cost savings, and I, I, I want to in us evaluating. Right. And I understand there's a, a PowerPoint. Something. There, Can there is it? something that, yeah, um, yeah that you Jenny put together to the committee. Okay? Sure, okay. absolutely. It was sent out one time before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, I just didn't want that to fold by the yeah. wayside in case. We Lock scheduling is not ever tied to savings. Right. And right. if right. we were, if our teachers were only teaching five classes, it might be. But because our high school schedules are six, they're teaching at least six classes. It would no, not. What, what Mrs. Bites is saying is, is that was the original right thought uh, instead of, uh, of, of of the former board. But we're interested right. in exploring for other reasons. The people we've right. met with, it, it sounds like a good idea, but there just wasn't enough time this year to do it to for do the it. coming school year. Or so. What we have is, is the upcoming year to prepare for the following year if we decide to do it. Absolutely. And then um, uh, high school TV studio courses, I was just wondering, and Mr. Henkel's on here, is there any plans for, now that we have the equipment in place for well, the foundation? We do have I courses. That we do have and good courses. I was going to say also that as our long-term plan is to do all of those a la carte courses that we right. just started putting a couple in right. place, right. that's something so that when we move then. on and expand that if we are able. Oh. So pretty much nothing for next year then? It'll just be kind of sitting that's idle? Not, that doesn't mean that that students don't use it. I know, for instance, the Shakespeare class was just using it the other day. Um, okay. And obviously we use it for announcements every day. And there's different things that we do utilize right. that room for. There's just not a specific TV studio class. Right. But that is something that... How is a la carte enrollment going? Is that... Yeah, has it, that it was up? very strong. It was going very well the last Great. that, that yeah. I checked. They, yeah. you were, we were minimum. exceeding our minimum um, class... Every size is that meteorology? Yeah, there yeah, there was just one that was well, low. Well and that's because meteorology actually wasn't offered as a course. <laughs> it wasn't. So that's why that happened. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. It was something different. There was we, we, we have to wrap this up soon, okay. but there's something we have to discuss. Titles mixed up. The board had received an email. I'm not sure if you were copied on it or not, but it was from a parent complaining that students are just being shown a bunch of movies not learning anything. Did, was that copied to you? It was it just came out yesterday. It, or it, 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 I know that Mrs. Bites gave it to me. Um, I and I, as I was reading it, it appears that one of the children are not currently enrolled in um, public school right now; that they're in a private school, and that one child is in our school. I'm not sure if I read it correctly or not, but. I mean, Rob, are your teachers showing movies instead of, because I think when I look to I see where the children fell, I, I think it was children where she left all are engaged in good instruction every day. Yeah, yeah, the, only reason, the, regular basis. The, only, the only reason I even brought it up is, is obviously that this was sent to the entire board. Mm -hmm. And in discussion with other board members, the question is, how often and for what purpose do we show movies? I, I, movies always have educational objectives. Yes. Well, depends, well, yeah, yeah. depends what movie yeah. <laughs> and what the teachers are doing afterwards to, 
determine okay. what and there's there's to relate. Done. There's there should be interaction. Done okay. In movies. A lot of times you'll see clips. Like you walk into a classroom, they'll show a three minute video clip mm -hmm. from pick your YouTube or whatever about biology. Yeah, and that's a different it. story. Oh, yeah, 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 video yeah, clip. Yeah. This person made it sound like feature Yeah, like you're coming home yeah. and they didn't do anything that they just watched a movie. Right, right. the entire right. period yeah. was you went in, you turned the, the, yeah. the movie on and, and the teacher yeah. did whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's not and I was just going to say, we stress okay. very much that students, if there if there is a movie that is being education. watched in class, if there is an educational connection, whether right. they read the book and now they're watching the movie. And then after that, I hope there would be discussion and you know, whatever. Work, yeah. Be. So, you guys want to set a date for strategic another plan? Meeting? Yes. Strategic plan update, real quick. Con and it's comprehensive plan. Strategic comprehensive plan has sorry, has faded sorry, out. That's sorry, okay. I just want to go on the record, and I'm going to uh, Andrea, along with um, Shelly Mikowski, actually pick the ball up with this and start it running with it because there's a lot of stuff that administration has to do before it even comes to a committee level. So that is where we are at, is putting in that information, and then the next step will be to gather the committee members, to, to bring them in. So we're moving forward with the minutia of the plan and being able then to present it as a whole. Because Shelley just completed her special education plan, which involved a, mm -hmm. a, a different set of um, committee members, mm -hmm. she felt very comfortable with the tool because it's, it's all online. It's mm -hmm. so many different drop-down bars and um, things to choose to move through. She, she was wonderful in stepping up and saying, you know what, I'll take this and I'll run with it. She had a meeting with administrators. She gave them all um, homework and told them that we needed to have things done by June was it June or June? Yeah. And then we were meeting again. So, um, but the, uh, the community is supposed to be involved in that also. They are supposed to be involved at our next step. And okay. when we're Thank ready you. to okay. present to them what, what we, because what they're telling you is that they don't want it to become like this huge meeting where everybody is, is having yeah. so much input. Mm -hmm. They want you to come to the, the committee and invite people and be able to have them be part of the stakeholders and say, okay, here's where we're at so far. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you thinking that needs to be tweaked a little bit from your perspective now? Because we have all of the, the, the pieces that have to be there. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the part where mm -hmm. fill in some of the blanks. Okay. All right. We have to wrap I up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the next meeting, I guess we'll continue with our normal um, five o'clock, does that work? Or six o'clock, rather, before the Committee of the Whole meeting? Good for me. All right, I will not be able to attend the next meeting. Good. But, Why not? Um, but that not. would be the ninth. Yes, that's correct. And same location. All right, so is there any public comment? I know I asked earlier. Mm -hmm. um, if you do block schedule, and are going to be doing it as, um, like, Your name? six days. Six days of the first half of the year of class, and six days of the second half of the year of class, you can do every other day. Can you please just state your name for the record oh, yeah. here? Um, Thank you. I think that's what we want to explore, all yeah, the I different think. options. So you, so we, both options are on the table? Correct. Traditional and, and modified block. All I want to say with that, I feel that AP tests are going to suffer. And that was something. Things. Right. It's one, six of one, and six of another, no matter which... Part of the year right, and that was feed. That was that was feedback that should probably be included somewhat in the PowerPoint that um, Mrs. Rex wrote has that we the feedback that we got from the administrator at Conrad Weiser School District that has been implementing block scheduling, but she's not seeing a huge effect on their overall and scores. That kids are still scoring well. No. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it puts I mean, more. It puts more pressure on the student. Absolutely. When I took AP tests, I was able to just walk right out of my class and go mm -hmm. Saturday morning and take my test, and I, I there were no issues. Right. You know, I didn't have to prepare like I had to prepare for the SATs mm -hmm. because we covered the same stuff the day before just in our regular class. Right. Yeah. And, Understood. And people take those AP tests because it saves them money. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. Mr. Kurtz would attest to that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 Now, the administration recommended regarding block scheduling last time we discussed it, not moving forward. Was that because there wasn't enough time, or was it for a, ma a right. larger reason right. it just wasn't No, there wasn't enough time, really. Okay. So that was, it really okay. was not enough time. I was just wondering. To do it mid-year. never really yeah. shot down. Okay. Yeah. That's it just kind of got put on the hold. budgetary yeah. reasons. Okay, I just wanted to check. Anything, Anything else? else? 
All right, well, we have to get over to the Committee of the Whole meeting. This meeting is adjourned at 724. Thank you, everybody. Do you, you want to carry this by?